Hi, I'm Jenny Jewell, a retired emergency dispatcher. Welcome to Call Autopsy, where we listen to a 911 call and I help you break it down. This one comes from Troy, Missouri, handled by Lincoln County 911. This is uh, Russ or Russell uh, Feria calling in after discovering his wife deceased. Let's go ahead and give this a go. Lincoln County 911, what is the location of your emergency? <laughs> Hey, ma'am. Hello? Hello? Yes, I need you to take a couple deep breaths so I can see what's going on. What is the address where you need this to come? Okay, what's, and what is the telephone number you're calling from in case we get disconnected? Uh, I, I don't know this number. I know my cell phone number. Okay, what is that number? Okay, who am I speaking with? My name is Russell Faria. Russell, what's going on there? <laughs> I just got home from a friend's house, and, and my wife, my wife killed herself. He's, he's, he's on the phone. Okay, Russell, I need you to calm down, honey, okay? I need you to calm down, take a couple deep breaths. We're going to get somebody on the way there, okay? Please. <laughs> <laughs> What what did she do? Do you know? Okay, okay, calm down, honey. Is she breathing at all? She is not breathing. Okay. okay. Russell, is there anybody that we can call for you? Okay, Russell, take a couple deep breaths on, okay? Okay, what is your mom's name? I'm, I'm sorry, I can't understand you, hon. Lucy. Lucy? And what's her last name? Maria. How old is your wife? Forty-two. Thirty-two. Forty-two. Forty-two. Okay, and you're for sure she's not breathing right now. No, she's dead. Okay. <laughs> Russell, how long were you gone today? I I, I, I was around five. I just got back, but she was at her mom's, and her friend was bringing her home. So I don't know what time she got home. And you said that. Uh, <laughs> Has she been depressed lately? <laughs> she is, but she does have cancer. Yeah. <laughs> where, where, Russell? Where's the knife now? <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't understand what you said, hon. It's, uh, it's laying right next to her? No, it's, it's in her neck? Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. Why would she do this to me? Why would she do this? Wrestled her on the way, hon, okay? They'll be there shortly. <laughs> Is there anybody else there in the house with you? No, no, there's nobody else here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Is she on any, was she on any medication? Okay, can you do me a favor? What I need you to do is I need to get those, I need you to get those medications for the paramedics, okay? Uh, I think they're here on the table. Yeah, we have, we have everybody coming to you, okay? <laughs> But what I need you to do is take a couple deep breaths and try to get her medication together, okay? <laughs> Russell. 
where where are her medications? I think these are it. Okay, where is she in the house? In the living room? Okay. Where are you right now? Okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. What am I gonna do? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. What is her name? Her name is Betsy. Betsy? Yes. Oh, Betsy. <laughs> no. Oh, my God, no. No, her friend dropped. She went to her friend's house and her friend dropped. She was at her mom's house. At her mom's house, house and her friend dropped. I was going to bring her home from her mom's house. This is not her house. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Russell, I have a couple officers that are out there right now. Can you do me a favor and open your front door? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's unlocked. It's unlocked. Okay, can you go meet him at the door? It's unlocked. It's unlocked. Russell, are the officers inside with you now? Oh, God. Okay, well, good luck to you, honey. I'm going to go ahead and hang up, and we're going to try to call your mom, okay? All right. Okay. Bye-bye. A really great call. Terrible situation, but a great call. Let's go ahead and go through this together. Lincoln County 911, what is the location of your emergency? Okay, Lincoln County 911, what is the location of your emergency? The wording's a little different, but it's still the where. <laughs> okay, ma'am. So the this is my only my only takeaway from this really great call is if you don't know the gender, don't say gender. Hello? Hello? Yes, I need you to take a couple deep breaths so I can see what's going on. What is the address where you need this to come? Okay. okay, and that's where the address is cut out. Okay, what, what is the telephone number you're calling from in case we get disconnected? And that's a great thing. So that's something that we did. Get get that callback number as soon as possible. I don't know this number. I know my cell phone number. Okay, what is that number? Yeah, and that's cut out. But that's, getting the cell phone number is good too. Not unusual to not remember your home number in a in a situation like this. Okay, who am I speaking with? My name is Russell Faria. Russell, what's going on there? <laughs> Okay, so we have we have who with the caller. Now we're getting to the what. It's a little bit of a different order, but we still definitely are getting our golden three. I just got home from a friend's house, and, and my wife, my wife killed herself. He's 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 on the phone. Okay. Okay. So she she he thinks that she killed herself, and she's on the floor. Hey, Russell, I need you to calm down, honey. Okay. I need you to calm down, take a couple deep breaths. We're going to get somebody on the way there, okay? Great coaching. <laughs> what What did she do? Do you know? <laughs> okay, and that's a detail, of course, that goes in the call uh, to build a case. <laughs> okay, okay, calm down, honey. <laughs> Is she breathing at all? So, again, there's a lot going on with this gentleman, obviously. But we, you know, she still needs to know if the option to resuscitate's there. She is not breathing? Okay. okay. Russell, is there anybody that we can call for you? This helps. Um, sometimes you can offer a chaplain. But this also helps with narrowing down more information about this person who's calling you. Okay, Russell, take a couple deep breaths on, okay? 
And, and this is where, you know, from low to high, nice, smooth, low to high, the empathy tones, this will switch from an ask to a directive later. Okay. What is your mom's name? I'm, I'm sorry. I can't understand you, hon. Lucy. Lucy. And what's her last name? Maria. How old is your wife? She's 32. 32. And this is so good because he is he is present right now. So the receiver is doing a wonderful job. 42. Okay, and you're for sure she's not breathing right now? No, she's dead. Okay. <laughs> Russell, how long were you gone today? All right, so we're getting more into the additional details for case building things and for reports. And you said that... Uh... <coughs> <laughs> Has she been depressed lately? See, this is where the call receiver is trying to narrow down why this person thinks they might have uh, unalived themselves. <laughs> she is, but she does have cancer. <laughs> Where, where, Russell, where's the knife now? I'm sorry, I didn't understand what you said, hon. It's laying right next to her? It's in her neck? Okay. And that's important because you got to know where, where the danger is. And for the safety of the officers, you have to know where the implement, you know, whether it's a gun, knife, whatever. Make sure it's that they know where it is. And the gaps, I know it's, it might sound gratuitous, but these, these gaps where the call receiver is not speaking are very important. So what can happen is, is, is excited utterances during a call, and she's giving them the chance for excited utterances, which can be used in court uh, as evidence later. That's a safety issue for the police, right? So for the officers responding and for the medical, they need to know, you know, is there anybody else that's a danger or anybody else that's in there that might be a danger to the officers? So do we have another potential victim? Do we have a potential offender? That type of thing. And that burp, totally normal. He's panicking and he's gulping air. So, yeah, if you hear that, it's, yeah. Is she on any, was she on any medication? Okay, can you do me a favor? What I need you to do is I need to get those, I need you to get those medications for the paramedics, okay? Uh, I think you're here on the table. And that's a normal ask. Um, if the person's on any medications, you're going to want to have somebody gather those. This is also secondarily helping to keep him present in the moment, or ideally would want to be present. Yeah, we have we have everybody coming to you, okay? <laughs> so what I need you to do is take a couple deep breaths and try to get her medication together, okay? All right, so we've gone. We've gone from the tone of ask to the directive tone. Beautiful transition, by the way. I am in awe. So the call receiver, great job. Russell, where, where are her medications? 
I think these are it. Okay, where is she in the house? In the living room? <laughs> All right, so now we have a location of the scene, which is great for additional details so they know, you know, where the scene is. Okay. Where are you right now? And then knowing where the potential perpetrator is is important for them because they're going to need to make contact with them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> my God. Oh my God. What am I going to do? Oh my God. Yeah, another nice gap uh, waiting for anything that might be an excited utterance in there. What is her name? Her name is Betsy. Betsy? Yes. Oh, Betsy. And for those who want to critique the, you know, not having the name used in the beginning through the call, if you're in distress and you don't normally call your partner by their name, you just kind of just are with them and you don't use their name very much, when you're talking about them, you'll say things like wife or partner or what have you, um, and only bring up names if somebody asks, right? So that's normal. No. Oh, yeah, no. Now her friend dropped, she went to her friend's house and her friend dropped her home. She was at her mom's, at her mom's house. house and her friend dropped her home. So was going to bring her home from her mom's house. All right, so this additional detail, you can hear the call receiver sharing, talking loud enough to share this information in real time with the dispatcher. So they are working in tandem as they should. <laughs> Russell, I have a couple officers that are out there right now. Can you favor and open your front door? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's unlocked. It's unlocked. Okay, can you go meet him at the door? It's unlocked. It's unlocked. All right, so this, this horror that you're hearing is he does not want to go from the kitchen through the living room to let them in. He doesn't want to go anywhere near the living room. I don't blame him. <laughs> Russell, are the officers in? with you now. Okay, well, good luck to you, honey. I'm going to go ahead and hang up, and we're going to try to call your mom, okay? All right. Bye-bye. Yeah, I wouldn't want to see that either. Um, more than one time in my life, or ever. Uh, my heart goes out to Russell. Uh, sorry that you went through this. I will put information about uh, the case down below. This was not an a self unaliving. This was a homicide that that Russell did not commit. And we'll share. I'll share the article for all the things that they went through before the actual killer was found. But uh, right in broad daylight, too, just right there. And, and Russell even talks about it. So, oh, heck, I'll flirt with this anyway. So the person who picked her up from her mother's house, the friend, the female friend, is the murderer. And so while he was gone, that female friend picked her up, took her to the house, bumped her off and left and, and left evidence to try and frame Russell. So, yeah, they, they, uh, they've done this before. They've been to that rodeo. So it's a little black widowy in a little bit of a different way, but very ghoulish. And um, Russell, stay strong. I can't even imagine what you went through or what you're going through. I can't. I can't imagine it. Even though I've heard people on the other side of the line with similar things happening, I can't imagine being the person going through it at all so hopefully you're getting help and getting the care that you deserve and need because this is horrifying and no one should ever go through this so enough i'll get off my soapbox <laughs> um 
Yeah, great call. Really great call. So when you're getting a call like this, your, your, your officer's safety is more important than anything else, period. You are responsible for their safety as the call receiver and the dispatcher. So like as tandem. But in this case, it would be the call receiver if they didn't get uh, information that they needed to keep their officers safe. So really great job. All, you know, got the golden three W's, tons of great additional detail. This did go to trial. It was, it was played during a trial. It was played by, you know, both sides, several trials actually. But yeah, really chaotic, really crazy. With that, please take care. Stay safe. Don't be naughty. Till next time. Bye-bye.